In the last video, we saw that the way to determine the acidity of a molecule is to look at the stability of the conjugate base. The more stable the conjugate base, the more acidic the molecule. In the last video, we talked about electronegativity stabilizing the conjugate base. In this video, we're going to also look at elect electronegativity, but we're going to focus in on resonance structures. And resonance structures will allow the stabilization of a conjugate base. So we start with propane here. Now if I think about the, the pKa of this proton, it's approximately 50. So propane is not, is not very acidic at all. But if I think about propane donating a proton, then these electrons will be left behind in that carbon. And so I can go ahead and draw draw the conjugate base to propane. So I go ahead and put in my hydrogens. Right? So this carbon on the left has three hydrogens. This carbon has two. And the carbon on the right donated one of the protons. So there's a lone pair of electrons left behind on that carbon, which gives that carbon a negative one formal charge. And so we have a carb anion. So in this carb anion, the charge is localized to this carbon atom. And since carbon is not very electronegative, it doesn't stabilize the negative charge very well. And so that's one reason why this is an unstable conjugate base. Another reason is you can't draw a resonance structure for this conjugate base. You can't spread out that negative charge throughout the molecule to delocalize those electrons and stabilize the conjugate base. And so for both those reasons, we have an unstable conjugate base. And since we have an unstable conjugate base, that's the reason why propane is not very acidic and has such an extremely high value for its pKa. Let's compare propane with this next molecule here, which is propene. And so if we're looking at this proton, the pKa of that proton is approximately 43. So propene is more acidic than propane. And we can explain why by looking at the conjugate base. So if I think about propene donating that proton, these two electrons would remain behind on the carbon. And so I can go ahead and draw the conjugate base. Okay, So for the carbon on the left, it still has two hydrogens. Top carbon has one. And the carbon on the right now has two hydrogens. Lone pair of electrons is on this carbon. So that's our carb anion. So once again, we have a negative charge on an atom that isn't very electronegative. And so that's a factor that would lead you to believe this is not a very stable conjugate base. However, there, you can draw a resonance structure for this conjugate base. So we'll go ahead and put in resonance arrow here. And I could think about these electrons moving in here to form a pi bond between those two carbons, which would kick these electrons off onto this carbon. So let's go ahead and draw the resonance structure that would result. Okay, so now I'm going to have a double bond between those two carbons. The carbon on the left still has two hydrogens. The carbon in the center here has one, and the carbon on the right still has two, like that. Now you would have a lone pair of electrons on this carbon, which would give it a negative one formal charge. And so this would be the resonance structure that you can draw. And so let's go ahead and follow those electrons. So the electrons in magenta here, right? those are the ones that moved in here to form the pi bond. And then we could look at these pi electrons. So I'll make these blue. Those came off onto this carbon like that. And so we have, uh, we have delocalized electrons. And remember, the actual, the actual conjugate base would be a hybrid of these two resonance structures. But your negative charge is spread out. Right? It's not localized to one carbon. It's, it's spread out and delocalized throughout your molecule. And that will stabilize the negative charge. It makes the conjugate base more stable. And since the conjugate base is more stable, that's the reason why propene is more acidic than propane. Let's go ahead and compare propene to ethanol. All right, so here we, have, uh, here we have ethanol. We've seen this in the previous two videos. Right? And this is the acidic proton on ethanol. The pKa value is approximately 16 for that proton. And so if we think about ethanol donating a proton, right, these electrons will be left behind on the oxygen. So we can go ahead and draw in the conjugate base. So this carbon still has three hydrogens. This carbon has two hydrogens. And for the oxygen on the right, it's going to have three lone pairs of electrons, which gives it a negative one formal charge. And now we can't actually draw a resonance structure for this conjugate base. So that negative charge is localized to the oxygen atom. But we know oxygen is a relatively electronegative atom, and so that oxygen is is better able to bear that negative charge than the carbon was in the previous examples. And so that makes this conjugate base stable. 
And so by comparing these pKa values, you can see you can see that ethanol is more acidic than propene. So even though propene you could draw a resonance, you know, you could draw resonance structures for it, and for for, eth for ethanol you can't. It turns out that the charge that has the negative atom is a more important factor than resonance. So the fact that this negative charge on this oxygen is, is is on an oxygen, which is an electronegative atom, that turns out to be more important than the idea of resonance. So electronegativity is more important than resonance. Let's compare ethanol to acetic acid. All right, so here we have acetic acid. The acidic proton on acetic acid is this one. The pKa value is approximately 4.75. And uh, let's think about the conjugate base. So if acetic acid donates that proton, right, then these electrons would be left on that oxygen. And so we can draw the conjugate base to acetic acid. And so this carbon would still have three hydrogens. Right, this top oxygen would have two lone pairs of electrons. This oxygen over here on the right would have three lone pairs of electrons, which gives it a negative one formal charge. And so this is the acetate anion, the conjugate base to acetic acid. And so once again, we have a negative charge on an electronegative atom, which stabilizes this conjugate base. But this, but acetic acid is more acidic than ethanol, so there must be something else to stabilize that conjugate base. And that something else is, of course, a resonance structure, right? So we could go ahead and put in a resonance arrow here. And we could show these electrons moving in here to form a pi bond, which kick these electrons off onto this oxygen. So we go ahead and draw a resonance structure, right? So the carbon on the left still has three hydrogens. The carbon in the middle here used to have two bonds to oxygen now it only has one and so this top oxygen picked up another t another lone pair of electrons like that and there's a double bond between this carbon and this oxygen now like that so this is your structure the negative one formal charge is now on this oxygen and uh, once again, the actual, the actual structure of the conjugate base is a hybrid of these two resonance structures. But this time you have the negative charge delocalized, right? So it's spread out, which stabilizes the conjugate base. But it's delocalized over two oxygens in this case. And so that makes the conjugate base even more stable than the ethoxide, right? So if I think about the hybrid for this, for this conjugate base, right, having the negative charge delocalized, and over two oxygens, up in this example, we only had the negative charge on one oxygen. And so the fact that we can delocalize that, that negative charge on electronegative atoms makes the acetate, uh, the acetate ion more stable than the ethoxide anion. And since the acetate anion is more stable than the ethoxide anion, that makes acetic acid more acidic than ethanol. And so when you're, when you're trying to think about uh, the acidity of a molecule, not only do you have to think about the electronegativity of the atom, you have to think about possible resonance structures. And the more resonance structures that you can draw, the more stable the conjugate base.